Welcome back to Let's Play Wild Arms 4. Um, I forgot to mention, but it, I am planning on doing a platinum playthrough of this game, which means we're going to wind up doing... Um, actually, there's only one side... two sets of side quests that I know of that are actually required for platinum. Um, and those are the arena side quest and the tower side quest. Like, there are a bunch of towers you have to fight or something. Um, I was just glancing at a trophy list in case of any missables, and only one is missable. Um, but yeah, let's jump back into the game. We completed all four prologues, so now it's time to see how everything fits together. Now we're gonna move on from here. Yeah, I figured that. That's why drifters fight monsters, right? Yeah, I, I read the books in Virginia's opening. This is probably like the anime opening or something. Was that a trope yet, at this point? Let's see, it came out in 2002, so I don't think it actually was a trope yet. This is just opening credits, I guess. Oh, it's actually showing how everyone got to the car. It being 2002 does also explain the slightly stiff translation in other words in other words in other words I do love like the style with the outlined character models, though. I think Tales of Symphonia also used it. it. Was the only Tales game to use that art style? What is the difference between uh, scenario and event design, anyway? Is scenario like setting up the world and event design how you get from point A to point B. What now? I think someone's on the roof. Yes, I must agree. I believe this person... I can't read in the auto-scroll segments.
At first I was surprised by the lack of voice acting, but the fact that this came out in 2002 explains it. Oh, we're finally going to get some party member combat instead of just one character. Usually it takes about 10 hours to get a full party. Alright. So turn one. Let's see, Romero doesn't seem to have an arm at all. Janice is the leader. So let's go for Dario. To build up FP on. Oh. Western shurikens, of course. I'm gonna have to worry about keeping Virginia healed. Oh, that's what Mystic does. Yeah, I. it took until well after I did her intro to realize I could hold triangle to see what abilities did. Okay, you defend. You get another shot on Dario. Yeah, I still need a bunch of MP. Okay, Dario seems to be down, yeah. Let's go Romero next. Oh, Clive needs to reload. Jet does damage. Gallows should go ahead and use a heal berry on Virginia, just because she needs it. unload here. Uh, don't need to heal this turn, so just fire... I want you to lock on on Janice. Defend. And ex... Don't waste FP. Just go for pressure on Romero. He keeps using the shuriken on... Cl 
five and it does nothing. Mystic, heal berry on everyone, reload, I guess accelerator, I mean, well, might as well save up for Gatling. Try refrigerate. I can probably take him out fairly easily at this point. Why can you not Gatling? Do you need to be fully loaded, maybe? The fact you actually have to defend and reload is interesting. I wonder if it means you actually have to manage when you attack, It could well turn out to just be padding, but... Hmm. So Drifter is just catch-all for mercenary. It doesn't imply any nobility. Oh, that's a lot of XP and Gela. I say it's a lot of Gela without having been into a single shop. I feel like they would not be able to keep their balance. Because... I don't know. Their movement changed to be equal and opposite. Going straight to Biscar. And title card.
Wow, not even title card. Alright, said northwest. Oh, I see where we are. I can handle fights here with four, four party members. I probably don't need to actually split up my attacks. We're not exactly playing Final Fantasy 1 specifically the NES version here. Oh, I need to... There we go. Oh, that pushed Gallows over the edge for a level. Okay. Back to Beskar. Also known as Beskar Colony, where the people believe in the powers that sustain the world, the Guardians. You sure don't react much. Well, I must go finish my assignment. Would you mind introducing me to a lady named Hal? She's the one who assigned me at the task of delivering the Arc Scepter. Uh, who, me? Introduce you to my grandma? I ran away from her three months ago. Everyone thinks I'm dead. Brother? You're home. This is like a dream come true. I didn't foresee this in my dream site. Although grandmother did say you would be home soon. She was absolutely right. So, he's family? As well as hell? Oh, man. Yes, that's an Arc Scepter, all right. Job well done. Here's your reward and a little extra, just to show my appreciation. Go on, take it. Receive 1200 Gela. Looks like I caused you more trouble than you bargained for. Not only did you deliver the Arc Scepter, you also brought home my incompetent grandson. Hey, leave me out of this. I, it was just a coincidence that I came home. Not necessarily. She did mention I may also have to deliver a troublesome package. I had no idea that package would be you until now. I figured robbers and thugs would jump at the Arc Scepter if I released information about its transport, and that this boy would go after it too. I never imagined it would be this easy. Should have known, in your dirty tricks. But tell me this, if you just wanted me back here, does that mean that I've had the real Arc Scepter all along? And the one we delivered fake? I'm back. Oh, you're so pitiful. Listen well. The Arc Scepter you took, the one transported by train, and the two over there. All four of these are genuine Arc Scepters. Gallows, don't tell me you thought there was only one Arc Scepter in this world. Your lack of discipline for your studies is atrocious. I thought I'd taught that to you in shame. Is that true? The Arc Scepter is a staff which can transmit and receive willpower. In other words, it's a sacred artifact used to communicate with guardians. There are a total of four Arc Scepters in this world. They were enshrined at various places that worship guardians, but are gathered here now. The bearer of an Arc Scepter is capable of sensing the presence of the spiritual guardians, which means he or she is capable of materializing and utilizing the power of guardians in this world. The bearer of the Arc Scepter has the right to use the power of the guardian. The bearer also has the right to kill the guardian. Huh? Shall we go for a walk? I'll continue my story then. The Arc Scepter made it to the colony safely, away from the hands of villains. Thanks to all of you, that is. But I do have a new mission I would like to ask of you. You want us to kill the Guardians? Not exactly. I've been training hard to become a priest and in the past year or so. I just developed a special ability where I can foresee future events through my dreams. It's called Dream Sight. 
Through this legendary supernatural power, I was forewarned of the following apocalypse. A blue shadow will rise from the ancient dead on our planet, Filgaia. The resurrected blue shadow will wield a sharp, cold sparkle that'll eat away the planet. People, animals, and other life forms will be devoured, and eventually Filgaia itself. But there's no absolute proof or evidence to back it up, it's just a... dream. This is my kid brother's dream. Trust me, his dreams always come true. Thank you, brother. I call it the Blue Menace. This threat is not all that the dream speaks. It also tells of how the Blue Shadow will be defeated. The Blue Shadow will be de expelled by releasing the chains which bind the Guardians. Filgaia will eventually rejuvenate, and a young girl will bring about peace and tranquility. My next mission to you is to release the Guardians. This may not be a job for your... Er, this may be a job for your grandson, but we're not Baskars. You can do it. When I said that the bearer of the Arc Scepter has the right to kill a guardian, I meant. You must face it in battle. It proves you're worthy to face these intangible, invisible things. And by fighting and proving your strength, the guardian will be released from the Earth, transferring itself into a medium. Well, what's a medium? This is a medium. It can be considered a passport that allows mankind to shape the planet and manipulate various powers. But this one here is an imitation, made from Baskar technology by extracting the breath of the planet like water and wind, and refining it. This mission requires you to, def to create a high-density, pure medium from the bare bones of the planet's breath, the Guardians. So... Kill the gods and take their crystals. Thank you kindly for looking after my incompetent grandson. Please return to the planet. It's Materia. We're collecting Materia. Why do you have to do that? A pure medium is much more powerful. All you have to do now is get one. You wield the Arc Scepter, do you not? Prove your strength to the Guardian. Uh, pardon me, but we're only here because we happen to meet by chance. We're not a team, nor do we have the reason to prove our strength to the Guardians. However, you did call this a mission. Would you mind explaining what our reward would be should we accept this assignment? A reward? Ah, uh, yes, a reward. Your reward will be the mediums transformed from guardians. Take it. Excuse me? Wipe that stern look off your face. Your good looks will go to waste. There are four Arc Scepters, and there are four of you. Each one of you is worthy to face a guardian. What you do with the mediums afterwards is none of my concern. Wait just a minute. Guardians and their mediums are valuable assets to the Beskars. We turn to them for guidance. But you would just give these away these mediums to complete strangers? I always thought you were a little slow, but now I think you're completely senile. My, my, now that's a surprise. I never realized you were so passionate about our old traditions. Perhaps you're more conservative than I thought. Even if we Baskars were to face the Guardians and receive their mediums, all we would do is enshrine them at this altar and leave them there. And what good would that do? I believe that entrusting the mediums to drifters who traverse the vast wasteland is the true meaning behind releasing the Guardians. In a sense, it may be a long shot, but I believe this gamble is necessary based on the dream Shane had. I know this sounds like a crazy mission, but please consider. So, kill the gods and take their materia. I'm in. I want my medium back. I can't back down now. I'm more drawn in by her story than anything else. Guardians, the powers that sustain the world. To come into contact with such a mysterious entity means... I don't care either way. If we get it, we can always sell it. I'm in if the money's there. I... I'm not sure, but I do feel excited. It's like an adventure for drifters. I always dreamed about it. Looks like you've decided. We all have our own reasons, but our goal is the same. Four of us would like to accept the mission to release the Guardians. You've made a wise decision. Not the fact that you've accepted the mission, but the fact that all four of you will carry out this mission together. The Guardians will have sealed their bodies in a distant time, but still exist today in intangible forms. Their strength far exceeds those of humans, so you should all watch out for each other. There's no need to rush. Prepare all you want before you prove your strength to the Guardians. It may be wise to brush up on your skills and learn more about the Guardians here at Baskar. 
During dialogue, words may appear in green letters, which signify they hold an important meeting. Press square to ask about them. Activate selected keyword. This ask system allows you to inquire about the word you've activated. After selecting the keyword, press X to get more information about it. Press circle to cancel. Green letters must appear in text for ask to activate. <laughs> really? I'll now give a brief explanation about the sanctuary from which you must release the guardians. If you need me to go over it again, don't hesitate to ask. The guardians are located at the base of the southern foothills. On the foothills of the ranges of Xenon lead the presence of guardians who represent elements of all things. The great elements were necessary to make the world what it is. There are four that exist in everything. Earth, wind, water, and fire. The guardians of these elements are worshipped as the four great guardians. All just power, don't forget. So... Does this affect Gallo's access to Arcana? It does. The Arc Scepter was meant to be wielded by only by the Ordained. Caution is required when handling it. The Arc Scepter is the heritage of the Ancients that allows us to communicate with things that have no form. That's why priests are trained from an early age to augur the flow of the Guardian's powers. Crossing the Wasteland? Don't worry, Roigman and Co. is always around. It's always just around the bend. Oh, I can't sell the gems, but I need to hold on to them now. Let's see, you sell antidotes, medicine, pixie dust, pinwheels, toy hammers, peppy acorns, breath mints, seed powders, magical answers, call whistles, and for 5,000 gala, I can buy the world map. Um, go up to five of every recovery item. That's my general rule. At least in games I am not familiar with. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sell... I'm going to keep five of each gem. Chat. I know he's used to like traveling, so that interest blossomed into my current business, I suppose. But ever since I sprained my ankle here, I've been a tra traveling salesman only in name. It's a great thing to merge your consciousness with the Guardians. That's why our ancestors left them for us. Even I showed my strength to the Guardians when I became a priestess. I just followed our village of Urs. Follow the sun to the east. So I faced the monolith of Gurdiev just to the east of me. It was such a long time ago, I don't remember what happened then, except how tough a trial it was. But I braved the trial of Gurdiev. Once I had the power of Earth, I faced the Guardians of Wind, Water, and lastly, Fire. Okay, so start with Gurdiev. because that's the easiest. Head out and face the southern sanctuary and you can see a ocean of sand, you know, right? The dunes are all that's left now, but in the days of our ancestors it was a blue sea full of life. I like how we're act technically playing in like mid-apocalypse. All right. Head to the Southern Sanctuary. different than I imagined. It's hard to explain, but... You thought it'd be a lot more beautiful and glorious? Does that explain it? With the Sanctuary Housing Guardians, the power that sustains the world, we do have certain expectations. 
suits me just fine. This place is like Filgaia, empty and barren, with only the dry winds blowing through. Is Filgaia the way it is just because this is how the Guardians are, or is it the other way around? Eh, who cares. Huh? I think it's trying to tell us something. Yo, what do we do? I don't know, just don't ask me. Wouldn't you be the one to know? We were a little unprepared. We should have inquired as to its proper handling. Something's beginning to swell up. I don't think I can hold it any longer. Where's the Arc Scepter? Perhaps this phosphorescence is a ritual meant for the bearer of the Arc Scepter. Does that mean we've been officially deemed bearers? Ugh. What was that? My head! My anger is never this bad. Is this a migraine? The pressure inside our heads does indeed feel like one. However, this feels as if someone is calling to us from deep within our hearts. It's soft, but very loud at the same time. If this really is the shrine where the Guardians are worshipped, then this voice must be... Let's go. Next time on Let's Play Wild Arms 3... It's time to face the Guardians. See you guys then.